What's going on, guys, and welcome back to WWE Network and Show, where every single week right here on the show, I, Graham G. S. Matthews, break down all the content that I watch on the WWE Network. Today, the head of Raw's 25th anniversary show tomorrow night, I'll be breaking down the episode of the 25 Years of Raw countdown that went up on the network after Raw last week, hosted by Corey Graves and Peter Rosenberg. So, it was about a 45 to 48 minute special. They aired a brief clip of it, a preview on the YouTube channel a few days prior to that. If you want, if you want to check it out, they showed it also here in this special too. Um, it was basically Peter Rosenberg losing the top ten moments on like a, a note card or something in the WWE warehouse with uh, Sean Mooney in there, which was pretty cool. We have not seen Sean Mooney, I don't think, since Raw 1000 uh, about five six years ago. So I'm hoping he shows up at Raw's 25th anniversary show tomorrow night. Um, but yeah, it was basically Peter Rosenberg in the warehouse going through the various classic items in Raw's history from the Raw Roulette Reel, running into the Gobbledygooker, stuff like that. Um, so I'm hoping we could see Sean Mooney and those elements of Raw's history also incorporated into the show tomorrow night. But aside from that, the main crux of the show was the 25 moments in Raw's history, the 25 greatest moments in Raw's history, counting down from 25 to one, so I think there were a hundred. Then WWE narrowed it down to twenty-five. Uh, the hundred, the other hundred were discussed on like WWE.com or something a few weeks ago. I think fans could vote on the twenty-five moments on WWE.com, and these were the results. And if they were voted on by the fans, I could believe that. We'll discuss the list right now, and they showed each moment basically in its entirety. Hence, why the special was forty-eight minutes long. Um, so it was pretty lengthy, but you also had some brief interactions with Corey Graves and, um, Peter Rosenberg throughout, who have good chemistry, they work well together, so I'm mainly talking about the 25 moments, 25 to number one here in the show, really won't talk about much that happened in between, except for some brief comments from some of the people involved, or the warehouse thing that I already discussed, um, earlier. So anyway, coming in at number 25 was when Bubba Ray powerbombed Mae Young to the floor uh, through a table on an episode of Raw in 2000. I could have sworn that was on SmackDown. It must have been on Raw, but I thought it was on SmackDown. Anyway, cool moment. Definitely went for the highlight reel. Perfect at number 25. And again, this is all subjective too. It's not my 25 moments or 20, my list of uh, 25 moments ranked. But um, apparently according to the WWE Universe, it was like that. You know, it's like that show Countdown. That used to air on the network years ago, when it first came out, like four years ago. Um, It's all voted on by fans, so don't really take it as, like, the fucking gospel truth. It's merely, you know, just a list. Voted on by fans. Take it with a grain of salt. So anyway, in at number four was uh, the 1-2-3 Kid, a.k.a. Xbox, beating Razor Ramon with a huge upset victory in one of the early episodes of Raw in 1993. You gotta put that in there. Huge moment launched one two three uh, one two three kids career as X Pac later on. Also kind of planted the seeds for the future click. Um, obviously involving them and Kevin Nash, Diesel, and uh, Triple H and Shawn Michaels. So huge moment in Raw's history. Really set the tone for the rest of Raw in the remaining twenty five years. Saying that really anything can happen. Number twenty three when Eric Bischoff was named the new Raw general manager in two thousand and two by Mister McMahon. We get some brief comments from Bischoff, who will be at Raw 25, which I'm very much looking forward to. I know he was at the Hall of Fame last year, but we have not seen Bischoff on Raw since the 15th year anniversary of Raw um, in 2007, over 10 years ago. So I'm looking forward to seeing him on Raw with who, I'm not sure. But uh, that was a really, really cool moment. you got to put that on the list, because Bischoff being named the new Raw GM was one of the most genuinely shocking moments in WWE history. It was after the invasion and WCW was bought out. After everything happened between WCW and WWE, McMahon goes on to name Bischoff as the new Raw GM after they hated each other for so long. It was an amazing moment. I haven't seen it back on the network in a while. I think they probably use his WWE theme, but if you can recall, I'm not sure where I saw the original footage, but I know when Bischoff first came out that night. I don't know if it was used the next week or if it was a one-night thing. He did come out to Back in Black by ACDC before they scrapped it and they couldn't get the rights to it or something along those lines. And they gave him his WWE theme that he now has, which is awesome. Um, But, you know, fun fact. I don't know if you already... You probably already knew that, but I don't know where else you could see that because 
Anytime I've ever seen that moment back, like on the WWE YouTube channel, or even maybe on the network, it's always been his WWE theme. Anyway, in at number 22, when Shane McMahon announced that he, speaking of which, bought WCW in 2001, really in so many ways ending the attitude air for WWE. I mean, you can argue that was WrestleMania 17 like a week later, um, which I would not disagree with you on, but still, that was a huge moment. A huge moment that really set forth the invasion, which was terrible, but also, in so many ways, ended the Attitude Era. So, big moment. Probably should be higher up on the list, but deserves to be in the top 25. Number 21, when when Mike Tyson arrived on Raw for the very first time in 1998 in the build to WrestleMania 15. You know, getting in a brawl with Stone Cold Steve Austin, serving as the special guest referee for the WWE Championship match at WrestleMania between Shawn Michaels and Stone Cold and the huge business he did for WWE and Raw around that period in time. That's got to be on the list. One of the coolest celebrity um, elements. Like one of the coolest celebrity moments, and or one of the coolest moments in Raw's history involving a celebrity of all time. So pretty amazing. Again, probably should be a bit higher up, but... A great moment, nonetheless. Number 20, Rock, This Is Your Life with Mankind of the Rock. This should be, if not number one, top five easily. To the highest rating in Raw history for any one singular second uh, segment. And it was super entertaining. It was awesome. Still talked about to this day. Even mimicked with Bailey and Alexa Bliss, which was fucking terrible. This should not be number 20. This should be top five. But I'm sure many of the people voting on these things... Um, or like of the newer generations, so they don't really understand. But anyway, amazing moment. Number 19, when Triple H crashed the Stephanie McMahon test wedding in 1999, which was hilarious. Um, probably perfect right at number 19, kind of sort of kicking off the Triple H Stephanie relationship on WWE TV. Very entertaining stuff when he's going through the drive through and the Vegas wedding with Stephanie. Amazing television. You would never see that today, but it was amazing TV. Number 18, again, probably should not be higher than the ones I just mentioned, but you got to consider who's voting on these things. Festival of Friendship. Now, I love Festival of Friendship. I think it absolutely deserves to be in the top 25 moments because it was fucking amazing with uh, Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho. One of the best Raw segments I've seen in a long-ass time on this show. And also setting forth the uh, feud between KO and Jericho ending their multi-month alliance on WWE TV as Jericho and the amazing heel turn that no one saw coming. Why is my name on this list? Amazing delivery from uh, Chris Jericho. That was incredible. But uh, we get comments from Kevin Owens saying that uh, he's not even on Raw anymore, but he said it felt good, betraying Chris Jericho. So a great moment. Number 17, Edge's farewell speech, his retirement speech in 2011. Like I said... I think in my um, my random video blog on Friday, one of the most emotional moments in Monday Night Raw's history. No one saw that coming. I know there were rumors, but I could not believe it. I almost cried myself because he looked obviously really, really hurt that he had to announce that he was done with wrestling. It broke my heart, broke his heart, broke everyone's heart. Um, but yeah, that was an amazing moment too. Number 16. And I almost went to that show, by the way. I almost went to that show. That took place in... I don't know if it was Hartford, but it definitely took place. Maybe Mohegan Sun or Bridgeport or something like that in Connecticut. I almost went. I didn't. And obviously, in retrospect, I wish I did. Um, Anyway, in at number 16, The Undertaker and Triple H confronting each other in their respective returns to Raw in February of 2011. That was a great moment. The feud I didn't really care for. There really wasn't much more to the feud other than that one moment. When they both came back, didn't say a word, and pretty much confirmed they were going to be facing off at WrestleMania. But it was an amazing moment. We all figured it was going to be The Undertaker. um, Or, you know, we all figured Taker would be back on that show. Triple H's return came completely out of left field. That was really, really cool. I thought their WrestleMania 28 match was better, but that was an amazing moment nonetheless. And um, it should also be noted, too, that I think there was a there was a lot of buzz from what I can remember about that two twenty one eleven vignette that aired weeks earlier and you know many people thought it was the Undertaker but it's like oh shit this could be Sting and I think at one point there were talks about having it be Sting but talks fell through 
and it ended up being The Undertaker. But uh, it was still a great delivery of a vignette nonetheless. One of the most mysterious, buzzworthy vignettes in Raw's history. And it led to this one great moment. In number 15, Stone Cold Steve Austin attacking Mr. McMahon with a bedpan in the hospital, which was, again, awesome TV from 1998. How can that not be on here? Number 14, probably a little high, but a great moment that I very much enjoy watching back any chance I can. When Shane McMahon returned to WWE in 2016, which, again, no one saw coming. These days, it's either reported or... Or whatever. Like, people know when shit is coming because it's either being reported or spoiled. Oh, this person was backstage. No one knew Shane was coming back this night. And I was watching with RJ. I fucking blew my lid off. It was incredible. Um, And his run for the past two years has been good. It's been cool to see Shane back. But it all started with his one return. And it blew the roof off the place because no one, nobody saw this one coming. In at number 13... Jeff Hardy delivering a swanton bomb from the top of the Raw set at the onset of 2008. We just passed the 10-year anniversary, which is fucking insane, to Randy Orton on Raw. Um, Incredible moment. One of the most amazing feats that I have ever seen. I don't care if you landed on a fucking blow-up mattress or not. That was amazing. We get comments from Jeff Hardy, um, who talked about the moment. I'm hoping Jeff's on the show. Tomorrow night. I'm not sure if he will be. I feel like he kind of has to be. He's a big part of Raw's history. Um, but that was a great moment. DX invading WCW from 1998 in at number 12. <laughs> Still super funny even 20 years later. This was hilarious. Um, you got to put that one on here. Probably should be higher again, but whatever. Number 11, Brock Lesnar returning to Raw in 2012. Probably a little bit high. Um, but one of my favorite returns of all time. We all figured Brock was going to be back. It was rumored over WrestleMania week and he would return. Didn't come back at WrestleMania. Came back in the Raw the next night, though. And that was before Raw, the post-WrestleMania Raw, was as big as it is today. So it wasn't a, a slam dunk that he'd be there. So when he showed up, huge pop. Still gives me goosebumps six years later. Number 10, John Cena debuting on Raw in the draft lottery in 2005, bringing the WWE Championship with him back to Raw. We get comments from John Cena. Really kind of kicked off one of the most amazing runs in WWE history over the last 12, 13 years with Cena on Raw, which he's been the uh, face of. I mean, he he left Raw in 2016, um, but he's still associated with Raw. It has been associated with Raw ever since. Uh, Number 9, Mankind winning the WWE Championship. On the first episode of Raw in 1999, again, one of the greatest moments in Raw history. Definitely should be higher, um, but it will forever live on in history as one of the greatest title changes, matches, moments ever in the history of Raw. Number eight, Trish Stratus and Lita main eventing Raw in 2004. Number seven, Seth Rollins betraying The Shield in 2014 on my birthday. I hated seeing that, but again, another genuinely shocking moment. We get a... um, some comments from Seth Rollins, who said it was that moment that really, obviously, he's not too proud of it in retrospect and character, obviously, but it helped bring the Shield together even as a stronger and better unit all these years later. Uh, next moment at number five or six. This is way too high. And it was a great moment, but it's way too high. You can definitely tell who voted on this thing. From 2017, only last year. Roman Reigns getting booed out of the building the night after WrestleMania 33. Amazing segment. Way too high, though. Incredibly high. Um, Just ridiculous. It'd be one thing if it set forth like a heel turn for Roman Reigns. Nothing fucking changed at all. It was a great moment. It was hilarious to watch. But it changed nothing. Amazing moment. Way too high, though, at number six. Number five, Stone Cold Steve Austin delivering the first ever stunner to Mr. McMahon on Raw in 1997. Also kind of kicked off the heel Mr. McMahon character on WWE TV. So that is easily five uh, top five material. Number four, Chris Jericho debuting. Can't argue with that in 1999 on Raw. Number three, again, way too high. Great moment, but way too high at number three. Daniel Bryan occupying Raw in 2014. Um, I really, really enjoyed that. It was something unique. Brian was white hot in 2014, at least in the first few months before he got hurt. 
Um, great moment, though. Comments from Daniel Bryan. He he still says, even in character, he keeps kayfabe alive by saying it was a great moment, but I'm on SmackDown now, and SmackDown will soon, will soon someday surpass Raw as the longest reigning television show in, like, cable history or whatever. Whatever the record is. Um, but he said SmackDown was better, which I thought was funny. Number two, the CM Punk Pipe on promo, Pipe on promo from 2011. Surprised, not that people voted on it to be number two, um, but I am surprised that WWE opted to include it at number two. I thought they would might they might have changed that, but they didn't. Uh, that's okay, maybe not number two. I'd put that definitely top ten, maybe top five, because it kicked off a lot of stuff. Um, but obviously the summer of punk that summer, he was white hot for a long time there. Number one, what else could it be? But Stone Cold Steve Austin's beer bath from 1999 with the, uh, the corporation, which was obviously one of the most talked about and remembered moments in raw history. So that is the list of the top 25 greatest moments in raw history as voted on by you, the people, the fans, the WWE universe on WWE.com. Um, I thought they would save this for, you know, I thought they might save this for Raw 25 or whatever. I guess not. But I think this, this they also replay it on the USA Network the next night. I think, like, after SmackDown. But anyway, uh, pretty good list overall. Definitely check it out on the network. You can, uh, you know, go through it quickly. You can uh, speed watch it if you want. They, they do show the moments one by one, which is cool to relive. And I would re, I would suggest rewatching it in its entirety because there's a lot of cool moments on here that you should rewatch ahead of Raw 25 uh, tomorrow night, which I will be in attendance for. So speaking of which, I should have video up of my time at Raw 25 this coming week. Very much looking forward to it. Um, beyond that, guys, enjoy the show tomorrow night. Be sure to like this video, drop a comment, share the video, and subscribe. All that stuff is amazingly appreciated. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews. Have a blast watching Raw 25 tomorrow night as much as I will being there, and I'll catch your ass down the road.